Alibaba tends to trade up, down, or sideways more based on the news or the winds of the overall market rather than on any fundamentals of the business actually changing. That, of course, makes it a really bumpy ride if you happen to hold shares of Alibaba like I do. Last year, when it was hitting those new lows, I was, of course, interested in the stock. I ended up being assigned 100 shares. My basis is right around the $80 mark. And as you can see, at one point so far in 2023, we were at 120. And now we're basically back down to almost, you know, my cost basis. And for the most part, it seems to have languished between probably 80 and 90 bucks and just kind of, you know, depending on what the news was that day, right? For example, you know, yesterday, the the news was, oh, there's going to be a Chinese uh, economic stimulus issued by the government, and the stock was up. Today, it's down again for some other reason. Uh, and every time there's any saber rattling between the U.S. and China, um, China and Taiwan, whatever it is, the stock reacts, okay? And on the flip side, anytime there's good news, it, it shoots up. But I try to sit here and say, okay, what are the financials? What price does it pay? What price does it make sense to pay for the you know the future earnings and free cash flow that this company can produce? And then what are the risks? And is the juice worth worth the squeeze? Right? Because there are a few what I would call unlikely events, but it's a non-zero chance of them happening, right? But there are some unlikely yet possible events that could make things very rough for investors in Alibaba. And so obviously, you know, in exchange for that, we would want to, I would personally shoot for a market beating return and a good margin of safety on the share price just to make sure that Again, the juice is worth the squeeze. When it comes to Alibaba's revenue growth, I personally can't help but be impressed with their track record here. So while you may look at the period during the pandemic and the height of the lockdowns and everything and say, well, it looks like they kind of went flat there. That's true, but to contextualize that, most businesses went one of two ways during that period. Either they experienced a slump and have languished and had difficulty recovering since then, or they went absolutely gangbusters during that period of time and then experienced a sharp decline afterwards with, again, difficulty in getting back to growth after those new highs. With Alibaba, they seem to be getting back to growth after a little bit of flatness. That being said, their net income and free cash flow did both experience some pullbacks in the last couple of years. But that being said, Alibaba has maintained a very high level of profitability. And this is in spite of certain headwinds. The aforementioned profit and free cash flow numbers are actually more impressive given the climate of falling margins for Alibaba. Margins have shrunk due to the increased cost of certain strategic initiatives, as well as increased price competition from competitors. If the margins were slightly worrying, what makes me feel a little bit better is the fact that Alibaba has a market cap of $206 billion with an enterprise value of $156 billion. The difference between market cap and enterprise value is the cash and debt. If the enterprise value is lower than the market cap, the difference is their net cash. That means Alibaba is sitting with nearly $50 billion in net cash on their balance sheet. That is quite the rainy day fund, ladies and gentlemen. I know I'd rest a little bit easier if I had $50 billion in the bank. 
Like, subscribe, and hit the notifications helps me grow the channel. Now for some analyst estimates. The gigantic spread between these analyst estimates really does give you the picture of how investing can sometimes be just as much art as science. With a low target of 100 for the next 12 months with a high of 220. With regards to the high, that's actually more in line with where I see Alibaba's value being in, say, the next five years. I don't think they're worth that today, and I don't necessarily see a reason why they'd be worth that within 12 months. Um, the low makes sense to me in a lot of ways, and I'll explain that a little bit going forward, with the average also potentially making sense depending on how you slice and dice things. Considering that Alibaba is over 20% below even the low analyst rating, they are, of course, coming to a consensus of strong buy. You really don't see this all that often, but it doesn't surprise me, again, given the disconnect between the stock's price and those forecasts. So when I'm valuing Alibaba, I'm going to more or less assume that this year's earnings forecast comes to fruition, and I'll apply pretty modest bottom line growth. Um, this is certainly lower than what a lot of people think Alibaba is capable of. I also won't directly factor in the balance sheet, uh, but I do sort of consider that I weigh that against uh, a lot of the other risks, and I say, hey, high cash position, no debt really to speak of. This means that at least one risk that is bankruptcy is exceedingly, exceedingly unlikely. Um, and so that really narrows down what our risks are to, you know, either underperformance or, you know, geopolitical world event type risks, such as like, you know, trade sanctions, um, Perhaps they get embroiled in some kind of direct war, although probably a little bit unlikely that I, d I don't think anybody really stands to benefit from an actual hot war. Um, but potentially something you know could go sideways with Taiwan, though you never know. And also, you know, again, we have our twelve and a half percent discount rate, which is what I put in when it, when I say, "Hey, I really want to solidly beat the market if my assumptions come true." And it's a little bit of wiggle room in case my assumptions don't exactly pan out, right? If the growth is a little bit less and that kind of thing. Now, with that, you would come to $101.84 fair value. So I see where possibly the uh, low-end analyst estimates are coming from based on the financials and everything like that. Now, personally, I was mainly interested in the low 80s, mid to low 80s and below on this. And that's just because I wanted additional margin of safety, okay? And we're very close to where my cost basis is right now. I think a 15 to 20% margin of safety was where my headspace was, okay, put in the assumptions, don't make them all that stellar, use a higher than normal discount rate and give yourself an additional margin of safety, even though the balance sheet is quite good, they have a lot of cash, etc. And then suddenly it's like, you know what, this makes sense, and to me, it's worth holding on to. So by all means, though, I know that there are some investors out there that just, they pass on China, right? They, they'll sit there and they'll say, you know what, yeah, a lot of these companies look like they're at an attractive price, but you know what, I'm worried about the future of China, the Chinese economy, the Chinese government, all of that. And they say, you know what, I'll find a different opportunity that's not in China. And that's a perfectly valid thing to do. Um, by no means should anybody feel pressured to buy something that they're not comfortable with just because the numbers make sense. But to me, the numbers make sense, and I, I think a lot of those uh, risks are a little bit overblown. And I think, on balance... They're, they're so unlikely to come true that I can't let it sway my personal decision here. Um, the value here looks really solid, and I think that in the long run, this will generate a really, really great return for me. So that's where I'm at with that. 
Don't forget to comment down below and let us know what you think of Alibaba. Like and subscribe to the channel for more and to help us in the algo. And hop on to Discord to continue the conversation. Link in the description. Also catch me every Saturday, 8 p.m. Cashflow Kings Live. Link in the description. Take it easy, everyone.